Hey everyone, in this video we are going to use a for loop to store data inside of an array using an array index. First, I'll introduce you to how arrays are handled in MATLAB, then we'll take a look at an example problem together. This video is the third part in a four-part series on for loops, so if you're not sure what a for loop is or how they can be used to perform scalar operations, I would recommend checking out parts one and two. A link to parts one and two can be found in the description below. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to write a script file to evaluate the function y, where y is equal to x squared for x starting at a value of zero and ending at a value of eight in increments of two. And we're going to do this using a for loop. First, we need to understand how MATLAB handles arrays. A numerical array is an ordered collection of numbers. And in this problem, our independent variable x can be expressed as an array as follows. In MATLAB, square brackets are used to define an array and each element in a row array in this case is separated by a comma or a space. My personal preference is to use a comma to ensure readability and to prevent any errors. This array has five elements. Zero is our first element, two our second element, four is our third element, six is our fourth element, and eight is our fifth element. To refer to a specific element in an array, you can use an array index. For example, x of three refers to the third element in the array, and in this case, that third element has a value of four. In this problem, we want to calculate y is equal to x squared for each value of x. And this is an element by element operation. So we don't want to square the entire array, we want to square each individual element. So we'll square the first element, then the second element, the third element, the fourth element, and finally the fifth and final element. Now let's take a look at how we'll solve this problem using a for loop in MATLAB. So here is the traditional structure of a for loop and how we would use a for loop to solve this specific problem. Now let's walk through each component of our program. First, we initialize our variable x. Our loop variable in this case is equal to the array index i which has a starting value of one, a step or incremental value of one, and a final value of n, where in this case, the value of n is determined using the length function, and the length function returns the number of elements in the row array x. And in this case, x has five elements, 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8. And for each pass of our loop, we'll evaluate the following statement, y is equal to x squared. Looking at the code can be a bit confusing, so let's take a look at this flowchart which can help us visualize each loop pass. First, we start by initializing our row array x, and we determine the number of elements in the array x using the length function, and there are five elements. Now let's begin. So our loop variable i, which is also serving as our array index, has a starting value of one and a final value of n, where n has a value of five corresponding to the number of elements in x. Now our current value for i is not greater than our final value, and we evaluate our statement. 
So the first element in the array y is assigned the value of the first element in the array x squared, and y now has a value of zero. So we increment i, our loop variable or array index by one, i now has a value of 2. Our current value of i is not greater than our final value, and we begin our second loop pass. So we evaluate our statement again, and the second element in the array y is assigned the value of the second element in the array x squared, and our second element in the array y has a value of 4. Now we increment our loop variable by 1, and i has a value of 3. Our current value of i is not greater than our final value. This is false, and we begin our third loop pass. Now for brevity, I'm going to quickly go through the third, fourth, and fifth loop pass corresponding to each element in the array x. So this is our third loop pass, our fourth loop pass, and now our fifth and final loop pass. After we've completed our fifth loop pass, our loop variable, or our array index in this case, has a value of 6, and this value is greater than our final value, and that statement is true, so our for loop ends. Now let's jump over to MATLAB and implement this problem. Now that we're in MATLAB, the first thing we're going to do is to start a new script file. And now that the editor is open, we can begin our program. Our first step is going to be to initialize our row array x. So x is equal to, we use square brackets to enter in an array in MATLAB. Now we're going to enter our elements and we separate each column in this row array by a comma or a space. Again, my personal preference is to use a comma to ensure readability and prevent any accidental errors. I'll end with another square bracket, and then I'm going to add a semicolon here to suppress this line so that it's not output to the command window. Next, I'm going to set up our variable in, and the purpose of this variable is to count the number of elements in the array x, and we do that through the use of the length function. So we do length of x, and this will give us a value for n of 5 because there are 5 elements in the array. Now we're ready to start our for loop. So we start with 4, and then our loop variable, i, and in this case our loop variable is also serving as our array index. Our array index has a starting value of 1, which would refer to the first element in the array, a step or incremental size of 1, and a final um, value of n. Next, I'm going to click Enter and start our statement. In this case, we are evaluating y, and what we want to do is to first, on our initial loop pass, calculate the first element inside y. And that first element in y is assigned the value of the first element inside the array x squared. 
Now I'm going to leave off the semicolon on this line so that Y is output for each loop pass. Now I'm going to click enter and type in end here and this terminates our for loop. Now I'm going to go and run our program. I'll give it a name in this case, for underscore loop three. I'll click save and the program will run. And what you can see is inside the command window, if I scroll up, I see the value of Y for each loop pass. So we have our first loop pass, our second loop pass, third, fourth, and our fifth and final loop pass. And notice here that we have a value of Y that corresponds to each element inside of our array X. Now I do want to make one note on this program here. Um, if I go over to this um, suggestion slash error line right here, I realize this is going to be too small to read, but what it says is the variable Y appears to change size on every loop and to consider pre-allocating for speed. Now that is not something that you have to do. That is a suggestion and it is something that I will address in subsequent videos. So I hope this provided a good introduction to the use of indexing inside of a for loop. Thanks for watching. You can find me at David Calamus on Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. If you liked this video and would like to see more, subscribe below.